Hello everyone and welcome to the video lesson of physics uh, for the crash course series in which we are started with the unit of magnetism and electromagnetism and today we're going to solve the second worksheet this is the second worksheet I've made another video in which I was solving another worksheet titled as worksheet number one so let's start with it So here we have the first question, numbered as question number eight. A wire carrying current is in a magnetic field experiences a force due to current. All right, this piece of information, I mean, it is a fact, and you should be aware of this fact. Sometimes they ask you about this fact one way or the other. But in this one, it's in the given data. On figure 8.1, insert the words current, field, and force in the boxes to show the relevant. Okay. So, first of all, this one represents the thumb. And you know one thing that you can find the direction of force if the direction of current and the direction of magnetic field is given by the use of Framing's left-hand rule. And this is something that I always insist that you can just keep in mind F in, there's F in the left hand also, F in the force, so you can just keep in mind that left hand rule is the rule that is used to find the direction of force, not the right hand rule. So in that rule, thumb represents the direction of force. Index finger represents the direction of magnetic field. And your middle finger represents the direction of current. So I just tell my stories that if you tend to forget about it, then you can like try to consider this thing kind of a trick that M I C Mike so that will tell you that middle finger the middle finger it is for C that is current All right so middle finger for the left hand the middle finger should be directed towards the current and for index finger or the four finger you can just write keep this word in your mind four field Okay, four field. So the four finger or the index finger will represent the direction of magnetic field. And the third one would be obvious that the one that is left would represent the direction of force. Okay, so it is a fact, it is a rule, it is a convention, it has to be dealt as it is. They don't expect any variation in it, so you have to like memorize it as it is. All right, on to part B. It says figure 8.2 shows a current carrying coil ABCD in a magnetic field. Okay, so now we know for a fact that if this coil is placed in magnetic field, 
and if we give this coil some current that it will start rotating because force would act on one side the opposite force would act on the opposite side moment of force would be produced torque would be produced and the coil would start spinning clockwise or maybe anti-clockwise depending on the direction of current but anyway the question is each side of the coil is four centimeter in length okay each side of the coil means from A to B it would be four centimeter from B to C it would be four centimeter and C to D it would be four centimeter and obviously A to D it would be four centimeter so coil is in the form of square not a rectangle the force on AB is 20 Newton and the force on CD is also 20 Newton calculate the total moment caused by these forces all right for moment we have the formula and this this is the question that relates previous concepts as well force into perpendicular distance between the line of action of force and the axis of rotation so for the first force if I consider that force the value of F would be 20 because the force is 20 Newton now what is the distance between that force perpendicular distance between that force and the line of uh, and the axis of rotation it is half of four centimeter which would be two centimeter if I am to draw it over here you say this distance would be two centimeter so the distance would be two centimeter you can convert into meters as well if you want to so the total moment by the force acting upward would be 40 Newton centimeter and the force act uh, sorry the moment produced by the second force which is acting downward now mathematically that moment would also be Twenty times two centimeter, because the, uh, once again, the distance between that force and the axis of rotation is two centimeter. So now it would be forty centimeter once again. Now, what is the total moment? They ask you about the total moment. So you simply add these two. Forty plus forty. You get 80 be careful with the unit we haven't done any conversion so you write newton centimeter with the answer if you convert it into meter it would be not 0.80 newton meters so that's it for question number this is number dash question number eight this for this was the first question for today alright everyone so let's move on to the next questions uh, so now I have some paper one questions some of the MCQs from the same topic of magnetism and electromagnetism alright so that's the first one that we have which metal could be used for a permanent magnet and which metal could be used for the core of an electromagnet all right, so first of all, the trick here is uh, that for a permanent magnet, we try to consider an element or a substance, might be combination of element, might be an alloy as well, 
we try to consider a substance that acts as a hard magnetic material. So for a hard magnetic material, hard magnetic material, because when we were in a permanent magnet, we want something that retains its magnetic property. So those uh, substances, all right, that retain their magnetic property once they become a magnet, they are like called the hard magnetic materials. Now, out of these options, iron and steel, iron is not a hard magnetic material, so that cannot be used as permanent magnet. So I can discard the option A because iron can't be here and option B because iron can't be here. So it has to be from the option C or D. That's the only possible case. Now, which metal could be used for the core of electromagnet? Okay, now for the core of electromagnet, we try to consider a soft magnetic material which can be magnetized quickly and which can be demagnetized quickly. So soft magnetic material can be magnetized and demagnetized quickly. So you can just call it easy come, easy go. Or just like a battery, which is kind of almost out of order, which would be charged quickly and charged in no time, or probably five to 10 minutes, but would discharge quickly as well. So the soft magnetic material would behave like that. So which one of these two is the soft magnetic material? Iron. Copper is not even magnetic in the first place. So iron is a magnetic material. Steel is a magnetic material, and it is a hard magnetic material, which is compatible for making permanent magnet. Iron is a soft magnetic material, which is compatible for making core of an electromagnet. So D has to be the right answer. Let's move on to the other one. Question number two. Which statement about a permanent bar magnet is correct? All right, it is made from a soft magnetic material. All right, just we discussed in the previous question. Now for a permanent mag uh, bar magnet or for any kind of permanent magnet, we always consider a hard magnetic material. So it can't be the right answer. I can like discard option A straight away. It repels a non-magnetic material. Non-magnetic material would not affected by a magnetic material. It would not be repelled, it would not be attracted. So it doesn't care. The non-magnetic material does not care about the magnetic material or the magnet. So you can discard this one straight away. If field lines cross each other, that's the violation of the properties of magnetic field lines. Because of that, I can cross it straight away because at any point, I say this is your bar magnet. At any point, let's say at this point, there is only a single direction of magnetic field. If it is in that direction, that would be the only direction that the compass can point around the bar magnet. And if the field lines cross, that would imply that there are two directions of magnetic field. So let's say this is the first line, this is the second line. So that would mean your compass would be pointing at two places at the same time, which is like inconsistent with the laws of 
physics. So D has to be the right option by the process of elimination as well. But if you read the statement, it says it's not pull, repels not pull of another magnet. And that's a fact that like poles repel. So that was the question number two. Now let's consider question number three. All right, so what I see is a pair of magnetic poles, north and south pole. The direction of magnetic field lines would be something like this. I don't know if it relates to the question, but the direction of magnetic field lines would be from north pole to south pole. There is the current in the coil that makes it turn in the direction shown in the diagram. So basically it is to the eye it is counterclockwise or anticlockwise, whatever you want to call that. Which change would make the coil turn in the opposite direction? Okay, so you need to change in order to change the direction of rotation. A force is acting upward on or uh, downward on this side, upward on this side. You need to change or reverse the direction of forces on both sides. So, what are the possible ways we can do that? Let's check out the options decreasing the current in the coil so they're saying let's say the current is not 0.2 amperes and you decrease it to not 0.1 ampere that would not reverse the direction of current sorry that would not reverse the direction of force hence it would not reverse the direction of rotation that would decrease the speed of rotation because you're not reversing the current you're just decreasing the amount of current. So you apply the left-hand rule the same way. If the current were upward, it would stay upward, even if you decrease it. You're not changing the direction of current. And if you're not changing the direction of current and direction of magnetic field is same, so the direction of force according to the left-hand rule would also be the same. So A can't be the right answer. Increasing the number of turns turns on the coil. You apply the left hand rule once again. You never consider the number of turns on the coil. So that is out the window straight away. See, reversing both the directions of the current in the coil and poles of the magnet. So they're saying that you place the south pole over here, north pole over here make the current upward from here and downward from here. Now this one is interesting. So first of all, when you reverse the direction of magnetic poles, that reverses the direction of force and hence reverses the direction of rotation. And once you change the direction of current, it again reverses the direction of force, hence reversing the di direction of rotation. So the overall rotation or the final rotation would be the same as the previous one. It's just like saying I have an object that looks like this. When I flip it one time, it would be inverted. And I first flip, it would be inverted. And when I flip this one once again, for the second flip, it would be inverted again, but now it would be just the same as of the original one. So the overall effect is zero. So basically when you're changing both the things, you can consider this one as, as a fact as well. That if you consider, if you change both the direction of current, and the direction of poles, 
the direction of rotation would stay the same. So D is the right answer because we're changing the direction of current. You're reversing the direction of current. Or it could have been done by only reversing the direction of poles, magnetic poles. So D is the right answer for that one. All right, everyone, on to the next question. A copper wire is held between poles of a magnet. The current in the wire can be reversed. The poles of the magnet can also be changed over. In how many of the four directions shown, the force can act on the wire? Now, if you, once again, it's like an extension of the previous question. If you flip the poles, from north to south, then, then you reverse it, place south on the left, north on the right. The force changes the direction, force reverses. If you that thing only. And if you reverse the direction of current, okay, let's say current was previously into the paper, sorry, out of the paper, now you make the current into the paper, you reverse the current, the force reverses. Now, if you do both the things at the same time, which we discussed in the previous question as well, you do the same things, two things at the same time, nothing happens, the force remains the same. Okay, if you do both of them together, force, in the same direction. All right, so you can flip the bar magnet. It would, it could change the direction of force. And if you flip the direction of current, you reverse the direction of current, that can also change the direction of force. So there are only two possible directions where the force connect. And you can think about it in that way as well. So in the three dimension we have, you can consider we have three directions, up and down. Okay, it might be upward or downward. All right, like this. And towards left or towards right, that would be one pair towards left or towards right. Okay, we two different directions, but we consider it as a single pair because both of them are along the, you can say, x-axis. Or upward, downward, you can call that. Both of them are towards, directed towards y-axis. In mathematics, basically, we call that up and down, we call z-axis and into and out of the page we call y-axis, but that's not the point here. The point is up and down would be along the other axis, and the third one would be into paper or out of the paper. That would be one direction. Into, oh, sorry, out of the paper or into the paper. That would be another direction, pair of direction. So, if one of the direction, one of the pair of direction, okay, if the first one is being occupied by current, and the second one is being occupied by a magnetic field, then the force can only be into the paper or out of the paper, because the force has to be perpendicular to the direction of current, and to the magnetic field. And in order to be perpendicular, it can't be upward because current was already upward or downward. It can't be towards left or right because if it is towards left or right, it can't be perpendicular to magnetic field. It would be just parallel to magnetic field. So it has to be either upward or, sorry, 
either into the paper or out of the paper. So let's move on to the next question. Which diagram shows the pattern of the magnetic field produced by a current carrying solenoid? Current carrying sol solenoid does not produce a uniform magnetic field. So A can't be the right answer. We represent uni uniform magnetic field only inside the solenoid, not everywhere. It does not produce circular magnetic field. This one is produced by current carrying conductor or wire. Just the same thing. Once again, outside the solenoid, I get this part. And at this part, the magnetic field lines or the magnetic field can't be uniform. It does not produce a uniform magnetic field outside itself. So C can't be the right answer. D is the right answer. You should be aware of the pattern as well. Sometimes they ask you to draw the pattern of magnetic field of the solenoid. So the pattern has to be this one. Which which pole would, is the north pole and which pole is the south pole depends on the direction of current. Then you apply right hand grip rule. In such a way that your hand, the fingers of your right hand curl in the direction of current then your thumb will point in the direction of north pole of that solenoid. But once again, that's a separate concept and a different topic altogether. All right, let's move on to the next one. The magnet is placed on a balance. The balance reading changes when an iron bar or another magnet is held close to the first magnet. Okay, so we have the situation, the diagram number one, when you place a bar magnet on the electronic balance, it weighs 100 grams. When I say it weighs, I mean the mass of that bar magnet is 100 grams, not the weight. So the mass is 100 grams. When you bring the iron bar, the mass is unknown need to find you bring another magnet mass is unknown you need to find it and the options are they're not asking for absolute value of the mass in diagram 2 or diagram 3 they're just asking for the values in comparison with the first diagram so it will it be more than 100 or less than 100 will both be less than 100 both be more than 100 so you have to answer in that way. Now, if you bring an iron bar, which is a magnetic material, it would become induced magnet. And it would develop an opposite pole on the near side and same pole on the away side, on the far side. Now these two have at this place, the opposite magnets are in front of each other. Now both of them would try to come close to each other. So basically they'll try to like come at this point of settlement. If both are uh, attracting each other, they try to converge. They'll try to come at a single point. And if this thing is like being pulled upward slightly, the mass would be less than that of the individual bar magnet. It would be less than 100. So option C and option D can't be there. It has to be option A or option B. Now, once again, in the second case, in the third case, you have opposite poles facing each other. 
So both of them once again try to attract each other and they'll try to converge at the midpoint. So this one would be like the upper one would be kind of pushed downward and the lower magnet would be kind of pushed upward as they are trying to converge at the middle point. So if it, this one is being pushed like upward a little, then the value of mass being displayed in the case three, in the diagram three would be less than 100. So A is the right answer. All right, then we have the next one. The diagram shows a thin copper wire in a magnetic field, okay. The force is acting upward. Okay, the, what do we need to find? In which direction does the force act on the wire after these changes are, okay. And what are the changes? Okay, we have here. The direction of current and the direction of magnetic field are both reversed, okay. We got it from here. This is a thing that we discussed previously as well. If you reverse the direction of current and the direction of magnetic field at the same time, so it would be just it would just be like you're flipping one thing one time and then flipping it for the second time. So that thing would be just the same as of the original one. So no change in the direction of force. If the force was previously upward, you change current as well as the magnetic field. At the same time, then the direction of force would remain just the same. All right, everyone. So that that's it for today. That's it for the video. I'll keep uploading videos of different topics and I'll be solving past paper questions, primarily past paper questions because at this stage of the year we are most likely occupied with the practice for the upcoming exams. So I'll be solving some more questions in my next video. That's it for today. Take care. Allah Hafiz.